I want to start with your first column talking about the GOP and they're going to need to fire somebody and how they're going to have to go about doing that. Tell me, first of all, who's going to need to be fired? No one's really going to be fired, but it's no secret that Ron Paul is not going to be the nominee in the Republican Party for president of the United States. And he's going to have to exit stage left in the next uh, several months. And how he does that and how effectively it's done will have a big bearing on the outcome of the race. It's no different than when you fire an employee or an employee leaves a, a company. You've got to be sure on the way out, people are treated with dignity and respect. And the GOP is going to have to give Ron Paul all the dignity and respect and courtesy that they possibly can to keep his unique set of followers in the fold. So how do they go about doing that? Because it's never easy to fire somebody. It's always a delicate situation. But here you have this hero of the libertarian movement. You have uh, entrenched supporters. So how do you go about giving him his due, do you think? It's not just a delicate situation. It's a very emotional situation when you let somebody go. I mean, the analog in business is it's the worst day of your life if you're a leader to let somebody go. It's painful. Uh, you're hurting somebody and you know that. And so you have to uh, have your utmost in empathy in understanding sort of the face saving that's required and the generosity of heart and spirit. And again, when you see that play out with Ron Paul, his, his followers are you know, passionate in a way that uh, the other candidates' followers are, you know, would probably love some of that passion. And so it has to be handled in a way that you understand the um, intensity of these followers and you've got to meet them pretty much where they are. And it's not going to be, you can't give Ron Paul a booby prize or brush him off or say, phew, thank goodness he's gone. He was a little bit of a kook and we're happy he's gone. And so there have to be negotiations between the GOP leadership and him and his, and his people about what would be meaningful to him, what would give him voice, what would give him dignity. So if you can't treat him like a fringe candidate, then what can he get that isn't a, a booby prize? I mean, to use your words, what are some specifics that you think could actually work? Well, w without question, when you're letting an employee go, you use things like compensation, you use things like time. So in this case with Ron Paul, what, what you use is the things you have. You have a platform, and he's got some clear positions, and the Republican platform has got to recognize his positions in some way. Uh, you've got to be able to give him a, a, a place on the... Uh, in my opinion, you're going to have to give him a place at the convention, a speaking engagement, a prominent one, a prime time one perhaps, uh, depending on, on the situation. But most importantly, Ron Paul has to be treated as a party elder and not a party outsider. Susie, I'm sure you've seen cases when a firing doesn't go well and it, it kind of gets botched. I mean, what is the risk here to the GOP um, if they don't do it correctly? Uh, could this backfire on them? You know, what happens when you fire somebody in a, in a work situation is for you, you're like, you know, uh, in, in a, in a, when it's not handled well, it's like, thank goodness they're gone, they're out of my life now, and, and their pain is just beginning when your pain, you know, you've been sort of holding your breath for the days leading up to it. What happens is, you know, you're, when you let somebody go, they don't just fade away. They show up very soon, usually right underneath your nose as a distributor or a customer or a, um, in some way in your field and uh, in the worst case scenario as a competitor with an axe to grind. And so when you don't show somebody generosity and you don't show respect, you're going to live to regret it because they can haunt you for years. Again, this is the same thing with Ron Paul and his followers. If it's not handled right, they will actually, you could see a case where A, Ron Paul could go out as an outspoken critic of who the nominee is, you know, it's almost hitting the stump and talking to this sort of 15% of the electorate, po possibly, these young, vocal, energized, engaged uh, yes. people, oh, right, all of our all four <laughs> of our children, um, and, uh, you know, and, and really make it a cause for them either to vote for the opposition or not vote at all. Um, and, and they will haunt um, the new administration similarly with just being sort of resident critics. That's how it could backfire if it's not handled well. They, will, they won't go away. They're not fading away. Ron Paul and his people are not fading away. And so their voices need to be recognized and heard and acknowledged. Uh, one thing that seems a little different, though, is when, you know, if, if I go in to get fired, I know who my boss is and, you know, what she or he is going to say to me. Who is the boss in this situation? Who needs to set the tone and take control of it to really smooth this out and make sure it's handled well? The nominee. Without question, the non-nominee has to be, in a heartfelt way, 
embrace Ron Paul, embrace some of his uh, uh, concerns, not buy into all of his policy by any means, but embrace his his arguments that he has had and, l and listen to them and let him go out cheering for the nominee. The nominee has to romance him in a way that he becomes a supporter, not a neutral person, not and certainly not, not a critic, but he becomes a cheerleader. He, he, he goes on a morning show, he goes on a Sunday show, and he talks about why he can support the nominee. And, and the nominee in this case, and the GOP in this case, have a perfect example of how to do this right from who else but Barack Obama, uh, who handled Hillary Clinton, who was a bitter opponent all the way to the end, and uh, Joe Biden, who was an early loser. They, Barack Obama and the DNC handled them perfectly uh, in the We're national. We're not going to that extreme. I handled it very <laughs> Perfectly. Right. Right. We don't like to use the word perfect in this case. But. Um, so do you have a, a horse in this race? Oh, yeah, without question, I'm a Mitt Ron Romney supporter. But, but Ron Paul would get four uh, children in our family uh, to support Ron Romney if he came out for him. In a way, you know, Ron Paul's supporters are these very young, uh, energized people. We actually had this right at our own dining room tables, what Jack is saying, and that our kids who are in their 20s uh, and uh, think that he is really their candidate. They love his anti-war stance, and, and they actually, his age is very appealing to them. They just sort of find his quirkiness to be absolutely, and his authenticity to be absolutely exciting. So do you think that if the nominee uh, got your column and read it, that they would be able to smooth over this situation and convince your kids to eventually uh, vote? for the GOP nominee? You think they'll be able to win over those kind of Ron Paul supporters? Well, I, I'm not sure our column will do it, but I hope <laughs> a smart nominee will do it. By handling Ron Paul the right way right and way. by giving Ron Paul voice, that would be, the, that would be it. It wouldn't be the... It, it would be what the GOP did. There are two words that go with every firing, voice and dignity. And you've got to be sure you give the person who leaves, the person who parts, the per person who separates those two things. So if you're in a position today as a person who's a manager uh, looking at this column and thinking about it and you know you're going to be letting somebody go, you're, you're out of money or, or uh, this person's just not been contributing, again, the voice, the words ringing in your ears should be voice and dignity because the person who's going out the door has got, uh, is a, is got a lot of humanity that you have to acknowledge but also has the potential to, to come back and haunt you. All right. Well, thank you for sharing uh, your voice with us. We love you as we send you off back into the uh, warm uh, Florida air. Jack and Susie Welch begin their new management column for Reuters. Today, we'll be looking forward to future columns. I'm Jen Rogers, and this is Reuters.